Hey guys, this is my review of the new Zoidswild Zero Phantoth. For those of you who are keeping track, you know I posted the Shield Flag review because I didn't have this one yet, and then of course it showed up literally the day after I did the previous video, but ah, who's complaining? Let's get started. All right, let's take a look at this box here. Uh, purple is uh, definitely the color of the day here. <laughs> you can see the background's purple. There's a, there's a zero grisis here in the back that also appears to be in some sort of purple lighting. Uh, the logo, of course, and these uh, stripes here, which we're going to find out in a few minutes uh, how those are actually put on there. Um, we have, oh, look, we have a spider diagram where the, that shows us that the uh, Zero Phantoth is actually only good at these things and not so great at these things. I'm guessing one of these is speed. Uh, yeah, the usual on the back here, you can see it throwing one of these bowling balls here, which is apparently its gimmick. Uh, instructions for, uh, for adding armor, which doesn't exist. Um, and uh, as per usual on the side, we have um, we have, you know, regular mode and uh, blast mode. I wonder if that means this thing doesn't have a bone mode. Um, yeah, let's get it out of the box and find out. Alrighty, uh, instructions, of course. Um, and then we have uh, some sort of mechanical piece here. Uh, this is, yeah, this goes on the back and houses the uh, bowling balls. <laughs> I guess it just has a coil spring underneath and stops them from rolling forward. Uh, parts bags. Uh, here is the gearbox, um, which incidentally, I don't know, there was... Oh, hold on, forgot something. There's this too. Um, there was uh, some conflicting information as to whether or not this was a battery operated or a wind up Zoid. Uh, I guess that answers that. I kind of figured from the size of the box, like there's no way this is a wind up. Uh, this looks like it also goes on the back, but um, not entirely sure why this needs to be such a big pre-built. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I see. There's no. There's a gear in here. I don't understand what it does, but there's a gear in here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's a moving part right here. This moves, and I'm guessing this is connected to the gear, which makes me wonder how the Wild Blast is actually going to work, or Machine Blast, or Evo Blast, or Trunk Blast. Let's go with Trunk Blast. Anyway, um, let's take a look at the A bag here. A bags, I should say. Number one. Um, A would normally be the skeletal structure, of course, which is what this is. We have uh, two torso halves here. We have the usual parts on the side with the sort of stylized rib cage that um, are going to drive the uh, movement of the legs. This is, you know, torso, obviously, neck, and uh, the lower jaw. Very nicely detailed, and of course the details really pop because it's because it's this sort of off-white, very light gray color. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of gunmetal parts here, um, some sort of uh, some sort of intake, which if I had to guess, probably goes on the chest. Um, this is, I guess, the tail. Um, these are actually this are these are the um, tusks or well <laughs> half of them. Uh, oh yeah, I'm I'm just looking at the picture on the instructions. Like this is this is the other half of the tusks here, which I guess that means the tusks are actually missile launchers. <laughs> That's awesome. Here's a foot and another foot and guess what? Another one and another one. Um, another tusk missile launcher. <laughs> This is the best thing ever. 
I know I said the chainsaws on the um on the on the kill scythe were the best thing ever. Mechanical piece, uh another mechanical piece, but I think missile launcher <laughs> Missile launcher tusks may in fact be even better. Okay. I'm already seeing that uh we have a mystery solved here. Let's take a look at this first. This is one of the legs. And these purple stripes, you know, the entire time, ever since we first saw pictures of this uh, Zoid, I was wondering if these are going to be stickers or if they are going to be painted on the parts. And, well, they are painted on the parts. And, of course, these legs have no joints, as per usual. This looks to be the armor that goes on the trunk. Um, this is another pre-built mechanical piece. If I had to guess, yeah, this is this is the bottom part of the trunk and the the coil spring mechanism that allows it to that allows it to uh, throw um, balls. <laughs> uh, here we have one half of the head with the uh, pre-painted. Um, eye or whatever you want to call that. Also, if you look closely here, you can see uh, it actually has these these little like holes in it that makes it sort of look like bug eyes. It's pretty cool. Um, more legs, and these are the ears, which we note in passing are very detailed on both sides, or at least reasonably detailed. They're not going to look like total garbage from from behind. Whereas, of course, the legs are um, yeah, they're just hollow um you might remember one of the promo pictures that we saw early on actually later on of this zoid um it showed something that was clearly a photo manipulation intended to hide the fact that the legs were hollow on the inside okay so um here we have i mean i'm guessing this just these go together to make the uh the projectiles, I'm um, just going to put these up here and we have the usual crank pieces that drive the legs. There's one gear, um, more balls, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to be saying balls a lot during this review. And also, metallic purple rubber caps, no doubt to yeah, to match the color of the pre-painted stripes. Um, and finally, oh yeah, a pilot a motorcycle type. And um, we have stickers uh, in sort of a made-up language here. And oh, wow. Look at that. That is a Cenebus emblem. And this also looks totally like old school Zenebus um, characters. I mean, this is obviously meant to be some arcane made up stuff, but this, this looks very familiar. <laughs> cool. That's weird too, because um, from, from what I understand from watching like three episodes of Wild Zero so far, it's not a prequel. So, yeah, I wonder what that's all about. But I guess the Zenebus Empire is coming back. Anyway, you know what happens next. I'm going to build this guy, and then I'm going to check him out in the photo booth. So, here it is in action. Nothing terribly fancy, of course. It walks, and the trunk and the ears move a little. I do like that it's so slow and stompy, though. And here's how blast mode works. First, you load it up with um, balls. Then you lock the trunk into position and turn it on. And then this happens. I really expected a spring-loaded mechanism with a trigger button, but as you can see, it actually throws the balls autonomously and keeps walking.
Now, comparisons. Here's the twin horn, which looks tiny next to the Zero Phantoth, of course. This is the Zoids graphics version, by the way. I do have the OJR, but I've never built it. Next, we have the OJR Mammoth, for uh, no reason except I know you all expected me to use the European Mammoth, so, you know, I uh, didn't. Now, far be it from me to cast doubt on the superiority of a classic, but if you think the Phantoth looks weird, the Mammoth is pretty damn weird too, if we're honest. Here's the comparison most of you probably wanted to see. It's a bit deceiving in the pictures because the Elephander's trunk is so much longer, but the two are actually not that far apart in terms of size. I will say, though, that having done these comparison shots today, I've come to the conclusion that the Elephander is clearly the best elephant Zoid ever made. I mean, second best, obviously. Sorry. I don't know why I said that. Second best. <laughs> yeah, uh, no real reason for this comparison. It just had to be done. I mean, we're doing elephant Zoids, and I'll never, ever, ever skip an excuse to sneak one of the whiteheads into my videos. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to show you guys is where the rider sits on the power switch. This is good news for all of us who hate these weird new rider figures because you can really leave this one off and it's not noticeable at all because there's no real seat for him. It just looks like that switch part is a bit greebled up. So, the verdict is that I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised. I knew I was going to like the collars on this one and it looks a lot less weird and ugly in real life than we thought based on the preview pictures. I will say that this split open face is a bit much, but at the same time, can we please appreciate that this Zoid actually looks armored, even if it comes at the cost of not having a bone mode? And like I said earlier, it's not like the mammoth didn't look freaking weird either. Overall, what really sells this one for me is actually the movement. I like the way it walks, and even though it's just a gimmick I'll never use again, the blast mode is much better than I expected it to be. So, unless you're just completely turned off by this one's appearance, I'm going to say I actually recommend it, and uh, that surprises me more than it probably does you. Well, and that's it for this one, folks. I don't know what's next. Uh, it's going to be a while until the Zero Grises comes out, but it's summer and I've got plenty of time to work on other stuff, so I'll likely be posting more in the next two months. Which means now's really the best time for you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, because you watch this video all the way to the end and I'm sure you don't want to miss all that, right? Right. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.